Okay, so let's just show some examples of how to use the History API. First, we need to initialize PubNub as always, and we're using the demo 36 keys. Once we do that, we want to populate uh, one of the channels in those keys with a bunch of messages. So I've already written this code and I've already run it, but let's just uh, give you an overview of that. So here's just a loop that loops from, uh, from, from zero to 500 and creating messages with the format message colon and then some index from one to, or from zero to 499. So those messages already exist in this channel. So now let's just do a simple history call with just the two required parameters, the channel up103 underscore demo and the callback function. And in this case, we're just outputting the, uh, the messages to the console, what we're programming in right now. Um, and we're stringifying them so they're easy to read. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we see here is that array of three elements. The first element is up to 100 messages from message 400 all the way up to 499. So that's our first element, an array of messages that met the criteria of the history call. And then the last two parameters are the time token of the first message in that list, message 400, and the time token of the last message in that list, which is message 499. Now, from there, let's, let's add some parameters to this to, to narrow down on our, you know, the number of messages that we're going to get back. So we might want to provide a time token for the start parameter. Or let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's just use the count parameter first. Let's just return five messages as opposed to the default 100. So as you can see here, we're getting message 495 through, 100, through message 499 and the time tokens of the first and the last message in that list, as we would expect. So we can make that, we can make that count number 5, 10, all the way up to 100. Any, any number higher than 100, it's just going to give you the, 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 uh, the default 100. Okay, so we've used the count parameter. Now let's use the start parameter. So what I've done is I've taken a time token out of that, uh, out of one of the messages, actually message 495, I got the time token, the published time token for that message, and I'm providing it as the start uh, parameter here. So if we do that, your, the results might be a little bit surprising here, but uh, I'm getting all the messages from that time token and, and, uh, and older. So I got messages 395 through 494. So I provided the time token for message 495, but I didn't get that message. I got all the ones before it. That's because the start parameter is exclusive, meaning if you provide it and there is a message that matches that time token, you won't get that message, but you'll get all the ones uh, you know, prior to that. And there's a reason for that, for an advanced feature called paging that, uh, that you can use to, to page through messages, uh, 5, 100, or however many messages at a time that you want. So let's take that same time token, the time token for message 495, and instead of using it as our start parameter, let's use it as our end parameter. So this time, you can see we return message 495 through 499. So this time we did get the message that the time token was actually uh, you know, applicable to. So the start parameter is exclusive, but the end parameter is inclusive, meaning if there is a message that matches that time token, you will get that in your response. So again, we got messages from the time token and newer. So there were only five messages from that point in time forward, so we only got those five messages. And of course, our time tokens, the, the time token of the first message and the time token of the uh, last message. And as you can see here, that time token is uh, the same one as we provide it as the end time token in the, uh, in the actual history call. You can see it ends with 03382 and that does 00 or 03382. All right, so now what happens if we provide both a start and an end parameter? So what I did was I took the start parameter of message 495 as we've done before and an end parameter for message 400 and uh, I believe it's 497. Well, let's just run it and see what happens. I forget which one that is, but uh, it's a message 498. So our return is two, three messages. Message 496, and why? Because the start parameter is exclusive, so that time token is actually message 495. So we got message 496, 497, and 498. And that end time token there is the actual time token for message 498. And you can see that right there in the results. That last time token is message 498. In summary, storage of playback captures all the published messages 
and stores them so that you can retrieve them later using the history API. And we've gone over some of the more basic parameters and use cases, but there are other optional parameters that you can use and more advanced use cases that we'll talk about in a later course.